today I'm going to talk to you about the power of words. The power of words is set out in the book of Proverbs as having positive or negative power. You already know that we can use our words to bring joy or sorrow, healing or hurt, discouragement or encouragement. Have you ever known someone that by their words can make you feel better about yourself, that you can accomplish things that you didn't know that you could, that it never occurred to you, but they just encourage you? What we say to each other, to other people, it does matter. Being careless with words can cause someone deep, lasting pain. And once it's said, you can't take it back. It's in their mind. And you forgive someone if they say something to hurt you, but it's still there. Proverbs 16, 24 tells us, Kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. Two of the Ten Commandments deal with speech, taking the name of God in vain, and bearing false witness against another person. The way we speak reveals our character. You can't claim to be a Christian and go around cussing people out in line. We live in a world that's filled with negativity, and if we think what we say really doesn't matter, we're wrong. In order to control our tongue, we must first control our thoughts, and that is very difficult. It takes a lot of discipline. If we surround ourselves with negative people without even realizing it, we become like them. We, they rub up on us, and before we know it, we start sounding like them. And as Christians, we should not mimic the world speech. As Christians, God wants us to use our voice for His glory. Not every thought that pops in your head needs to come out of your mouth. Amen. There's, <laughs> there's power in our words, and we must use them carefully. Matthew 15, 8 says, But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this defiles a person. Yes. If you're an unhappy person, what you say is not going to be the same thing that a happy person would say. And no one says it's always easy to live a spirit-filled life. And that's why Paul tells us to put on the full armor of God. We need wisdom from above. Our words display the work of God in our hearts. There's something happening every single day that's causing big problems for teenagers. Cyberbullying. Wow. Teens are posting horrible, mean, hateful, disgusting things, and some of these kids have killed themselves over yes. it. It's a fact, and it's real. Words can kill. And it's just becoming such a common occurrence, and these kids are just at the mercy of these bullies. We just... We don't need to live talking about other people and saying hurtful things. It's just not what God had in mind when he gave us this mouth. That is not what he wanted. The book of James has quite a bit to say on this subject. In chapter 1, verse 26, he says, If anyone thinks he's religious without controlling his tongue, then his religion is useless and he deceives himself. Amen. Far too many people have ruined relationships and even their careers because of what comes out of their mouth. You must learn to control your tongue instead of letting your tongue control you. Just like one match can start a huge fire, one word can light another word, and then that explodes into a huge, uncontrolled fire of anger and hurt. One word, one sentence, and one phrase can lead a chain reaction that damages someone's life. Satan wants nothing more than to let you talk you into believing that what comes out of your mouth really doesn't matter. 
that's one little lie. It's not going to hurt anything. We know it's not true, but without help from God, we're not able to fight this battle. We praise our Lord with our mouth, and we curse men made in God's image with the same mouth. The Lord tells us through James that this should not be. As individuals made in his image, our highest calling is to model with our mouths the image and character of God. We're his messengers. And keep in mind that Satan knows this too. Okay. From the very beginning, he has tried to trip you up. He started with Eve, and there's lots of stories in the Bible about him being the father of lies and what happened to these people with their lies. It didn't turn out well. Our God is the God of truth. He cannot lie. He spoke everything to into existence. He spoke, light appeared. He spoke, waters parted. He spoke the universe into being. In the first chapter of Genesis, it states ten times, and God said. In 1 Samuel 16, 7, it says, God sees, not as man sees, for man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. We can't say we're living a Christian life because we go to church on Sunday and then dishonor God the rest of the week with our mouth. If you say... Christ is Lord over all. He also needs to be the Lord over your lips. Your words reflect your, whose interest you really serve, yours or God's. You need to take a close look at not only what we say, but how we say it. Do our words line up with the Word of God? The same God that praises, the same mouth, sorry, <laughs> that praises God on Sunday spews out gossip, criticism, and backbiting. You are responsible for the words you speak. And if you don't believe it, you're just deceiving yourself. If you're continually speaking negative words to yourself, doubt and fear, you'll start living your life that way. With your tongue, that tiny little muscle in your mouth, you have the power to create a good or bad atmosphere in your home, in your relationships, and in your entire life. It can bless or bruise, heal or hurt, love or lie. God's word has not changed. His word is eternal. It's alive. It's powerful. It's full of faith. As you speak the word of faith, you're releasing that same creative power and it will bring miracles into your life. It's able to address the deepest needs of every human being in every time and in every place. The word of God doesn't care if you're young or old, rich or poor, healthy or disabled. It speaks to us every day if we're willing to hear it. Proverbs 18.21 states, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Mm -hmm. The words we hear settle in our hearts and minds. Every word created has meaning. When a child grows up hearing that they're worthless, they believe it, and some never do well in their lives because they don't believe that they can. It does something within us. It changes who we could be into someone who thinks that we can't do anything. In our culture, we seem to have lost our understanding of the power of our words to impact the lives of those around us. We seem to think that it's okay to voice our opinion on any subject, whether they want our opinion or they don't. Words have become weapons of mass destruction, and that's not being overly dramatic. This is not what this is not what God intended when He made us. We're the only creatures that can speak, and instead of using our voices for the purpose He intended, we use them to hurt and belittle those around us. 
And I'm not saying all of us are horrible people and that's all we do once we walk out these doors every Sunday. I'm just saying that we are human and we do mess up. We lose our tempers. We, it, it happens. I just think that we need to be more careful about what we say and how we say it. My boys grew up sick and tired of hearing me say, say what you mean and mean what you say. Hmm. I just felt that that was so important. And until Larry showed me that slide, I had no idea that Patton had anything to do with it. Um, empty promises are, are that. That's all they are. They're empty. And if you keep saying you're going to do something for somebody and then you never show up and you never do it, that person loses trust and faith in you. Now, look at what God's words do. They never change. They give us the promise that he will never leave us, that he hears our prayers, that he loves us, and he gives us the promise of eternal life. I read a story about a woman who was town gossip. And after hearing her pastor's sermon on this subject, she was feeling pretty bad about it, so she asked him what she could do to reverse the damage that she's caused. He told her to go get a feather pillow, take it to the highest point in town on a windy day, and shake out all the feathers. Then go all over town and gather up every single one of those feathers and put them back in the pillow. <laughs> well, naturally, she said, this is impossible. I can't do it. And the pastor said, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's the point. Once said, hurtful words can never be retrieved, no matter how much we regret them. The Holy Spirit touching the life and the heart of a believer can help control the urge to react in a hurtful way when we're upset with someone. It's so easy to let hateful words come out of our mouths when we're in the middle of an argument. Jesus said that we will give account on the day of judgment for every careless word we have spoken. Can you even imagine having to explain to God why you said something to your family member, your uncle, your boss, something that was just rude or mean or hateful? Words are seeds. They produce fruit. It's up to us whether it's good fruit or bad fruit. Think about it before you say it. Remember what it says in Proverbs 17:28. Even a fool appears wise when he keeps silent. Amen. Amen.